Good afternoon. Thank you so much for coming to the absolute last session of the conference. <laughs> And um, I realized earlier today why this is the last session of the conference, because if I were to come talk to you about planning a healthy diet on Thursday when you all just got to New Orleans, you wouldn't have been all that interested. So you've had all your beignets, you've had your po' boys, you've had all that. So now we can get serious about planning a healthy diet. Um, so Victoria very nicely went through all the different nutrients, but we don't actually eat single nutrients. We eat food. So how can we put this all together into a healthy diet? So just to let you know, I. Um, I work with adult patients that have infectious disease. Some of them have primary immunodeficiencies, some of them do not. So I, so I am seeing infectious disease patients on a regular basis. A healthy diet's important for all of us. It's even that much more important for individuals with immunodeficiency because you're already at risk of developing an infection despite maybe eating a healthy diet. So if we don't meet our needs through diet, then we're even at greater risk um, of infection. So. Um, Unless the individual with an immunodeficiency also has another condition such as diabetes or celiac disease that would require a special diet, there, there is no special diet. It is a generally healthy diet. And that doesn't sound sexy or all that interesting, but that is the reality. So that's what we're going to talk about today. How can we put all this together into a healthy diet? Um, so I have no disclosures today. And here's the outline. I want to make you aware, if you are not already, of some um, easily accessible, freely available resources for Americans. And these are the Dietary Guidelines for Americans. Uh, 2010 is the most recent version. They're working on the new ones right now, which gives consumers guidelines for choosing a healthy diet. And then the USDA Food Guidance System, which you may know better as MyPlate. It used to be My Pyramid, if you remember that from years ago. And we'll go through the, the food groups and a few other things like oils and empty calories that MyPlate can help you with. Um, then just touch on real quickly what is a healthy body weight and then putting it all together um, with this thing called the Super Tracker. If you're not aware of it, it can be very helpful when you're trying to design your own diet. So just to give a brief introduction to the Dietary Guidelines for America, the current ones has three main goals for consumers. And these might look pretty simple, but they're very important. The first one is to balance calories with your physical activity to manage a healthy body weight. The second one is to focus on consuming more of certain foods. And these are things like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, fat-free and low-fat dairy, and seafood. Within this goal are three key messages, which I'm going to highlight as we go through the next slides. One is to make half your plate fruits and vegetables. So in general, we just want people to eat more fruits and vegetables. And it's probably pretty obvious, given Victoria's presentation, as to why we're, we're saying that. Make at least half of your grain choices each day whole grains. And then also switching to fat-free and low-fat milk for individuals that are two years of age or older. And then the last goal is to reduce intake of certain foods that are rich in certain um, nutrients that we actually want Americans to limit. These are things like sodium or salt, saturated fats, trans fats, cholesterol, added sugars, and refined grains. So, and I've, I've tried to put up the websites for all of this information, so um, it, this is all freely available. Um, so this is the new USDA food guidance system, well, relatively new called MyPlate, and there is the icon with the associated website. This is a fabulous website. It has tons of information available free of charge. So it illustrates the five main food groups, so we'll go through these individually, using a very familiar image. If you remember the old food guide pyramid or My Pyramid, it wasn't a really very useful icon. People didn't know what to do with it. So this icon is supposed to be your plate at a meal, so most people can visualize what their plate looks like. So just getting people to think more before they put food on their plate. Um, there's also a My Plate for Kids, which is shown here, which has a lot of activities, um, recipes for kids, uh, all sorts of fun things. And My Plate is also available completely in Spanish as well. So covers a lot of bases there. So if you remember one of those first, that first key message I mentioned um, from the dietary guidelines was to make half your plate fruits and vegetables. And the My Plate icon um, does show that here with fruits and vegetables being the entire left half of the plate. 
So I like to start with vegetables because I think they're the most important group. Um, so a vegetable is any vegetable you can think of or 100% vegetable juice. Those all count. They can be raw, they can be cooked, they can be fresh, frozen, canned, or dried. A lot of people get sidetracked on, I have to eat fresh vegetables, I have to eat fresh fruit. You don't. You figure out what works for you, what's you know in your budget, what you enjoy. Um, just eat more vegetables. Um, so why do we want Americans to eat more vegetables? Mainly because they're low in fat, low in sodium, low in calories, which is helpful as we're trying to maintain our weight, and they have no cholesterol. They're also a source of essential nutrients, which many of these have already been mentioned so far today, things like potassium, fiber, folate, vitamin A and C. And one area where I think the choosemyplate.gov website excels is in giving Americans practical tips for including these sorts of foods in your diet. So I encourage everyone to go there and look at the tips for increasing your vegetable intake, your fruit intake, whatever group that you're interested in, because I certainly can't do all that uh, today. There's five vegetable subgroups. You don't have to choose from each subgroup each day. That would be fabulous if you could, but ideally you would choose from each subgroup within each week. So things like the dark greens, like broccoli and spinach, the starchy ones, potatoes, peas, and corn, red and orange, which includes things like carrots and tomatoes. The beans and peas also fit into this group. So navy beans, garbanzo beans, black-eyed peas, which you may have had since you've been here in New Orleans. Um, and then you have the others, which is just the catch-all group, which um, I've listed some examples of the others here. So ideally picking from each of these groups each week would be your goal. How much do you need? Um, this is also straight from the Choose My Plate website, so you don't have to jot any of this down, but just to show you that needs are based on gender, age, and activity level. So you can see they range all the way from a low of one cup for a young child all the way up to three cups for an adult male. These numbers or servings are for individuals that get less than 30 minutes of physical activity in a day. So if you're an individual who is more active, then your calorie needs are higher and you could probably increase your intake from, from vegetables. So this is just the bare minimum. Okay, let's move on to fruit. So this would be any fruit or 100% fruit juice. Again, just like the vegetables, they can be raw cooked, they can be fresh, frozen, canned, or dried. Um, we won't encourage Americans to eat fruit for many of the same reasons we're encouraging vegetables. Low in sodium, low in fat, low in calories, no cholesterol. Remember, these are all things we said we want to limit. Um, but sources of essential nutrients shown there. And again, please visit the website for practical tips on how you can increase either your own fruit take or that of your family. Um, again, the fruit recommendations are also based on age, gender, and activity level. These are a little bit lower than vegetables, ranging from one cup for young children up to two cups for adult men. And again, these numbers are based on somebody who gets less than 30 minutes of physical activity in a day. So if you're more active than that, then you can eat more fruit. Okay, so moving on to grains, our third group. Um, these are any foods made from a cereal grain. So wheat, rice, oats, cornmeal, um, et cetera. Things that would fall into this group would be breads, pasta, oatmeal, cereals, things like that would be in the grain group. So in this group, we don't have too much trouble with people not getting enough. The issue with the grain group is people choosing the right kind. So there's two different groups of grains. There's the whole grains and the refined grains. Whole grains are what we're really encouraging people to consume more of. The whole grain is higher in fiber, naturally higher in vitamins and minerals. These are things like whole wheat breads, whole wheat pasta, brown rice, popcorn, a lot of people don't realize this is a whole grain. So, and this fits in with one of those key messages from the dietary guidelines, which is try to make half of your grain choices whole grains. You can still have the other half refined, but try and get at least half whole grains. The refined grains, the process of milling these grains actually pulls out the dietary fiber of some of the B vitamins and some of the um, iron. If the grain is enriched, they do put back the B vitamins and they do add back the iron, but they do not add back the dietary fiber. So whole grains are always going to be a better choice. But refined grains you're probably very familiar with. These are things like white bread, white rice, white pasta. So we want people to eat less of those. Um, in terms of um, why we want people to eat grains, I mentioned good, whole grains are a good source of dietary fiber. 
Good, all grains are good sources of B vitamins, including thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, and folate, and then minerals like iron, magnesium, and selenium. The amount, just like fruits and vegetables, will vary, will vary with age, sex, and activity level, but in general, somewhere between three and eight ounces per day for most people. Most of us, when we're eating grains, we don't think of it in, in ounces. So to give you some idea of what I'm talking about, one ounce of grains would be equal to one slice of bread, one cup of a cold cereal, or a half cup of cooked cereal, pasta, or rice. And all of this information is available on the Choose My Plate website if you uh, forget what an ounce is equal to. Proteins, also a group that we do not have too much trouble meeting our needs. As Americans, we tend to eat relatively high protein diets, but we're also not making the best choices within this group. This group includes meat, poultry, and seafood, beans and peas, eggs, processed soy products, nuts, and seeds. We're encouraging Americans to eat seafood twice a week, assuming you're not a vegetarian or a vegan. Um, and all meat and poultry choices should be lean, or what, what, we mean, what we mean by that is low fat. So the problem is, as Americans, we're choosing higher fat protein sources, and we're not choosing varied protein sources. Um, so why do we want people to eat from the protein group? Um, as I just mentioned, we, we get plenty of protein, we're just not making the right choices here. And you can see the website for um, tips on making those low fat and varied choices. This group is a source of essential nutrients, obviously protein, but also B vitamins, vitamin E, certain minerals, and omega-3 fats, which were mentioned earlier from, from the seafood. And our last group is dairy. Um, this is milk and any foods made from milk, which includes milk, yogurt, cheese, and milk-based desserts. And this is that last key message that was part of the dietary guidelines is for most Americans to switch to fat-free or low-fat milk products, assuming two years of age or older. So this group is a source of important nutrients, uh, protein being one, so the main source of calcium and vitamin D for most Americans. Um, and also a good source of potassium. How much, as with all the other groups, will depend on age and gender and activity level, but roughly we're talking between two and three cups of dairy per day to meet your needs. So those are the five groups. I wanna mention oils. Oils are not a food group, but because they contain some essential nutrients, they're worthy of mentioning. So oils are high in healthy fats. They also contain no cholesterol. Examples would be your straight oils, things like olive and canola oil. Also foods that are naturally high in oils, like nuts, olives, and avocados would fall into this group. And foods that are mainly oils, these are things like salad dressings, mayonnaises, margarines would fall into this, um, I shouldn't say group, fall into this category. Um, these foods are very high in calories, so although certainly encourage people to consume them, you want to keep your portion size moderate, keep it small, or else you're going to go outside of your calorie needs, which will result in weight gain. And then the last thing I want to mention within this whole my plate um, area is the idea of empty calories. Um, these are foods that are high in either added fat, added and or added sugars, but they have very other, very little else to offer. So no significant amounts of vitamins, minerals, things like that. You can see some examples here, which I probably don't even have to tell you what these are, but things like baked goods and candies, sugar sweetened beverages, cheeses, ice cream, fatty meats. So these would all kind of fall into this empty calorie group. It's not that you can never have these things. I'm a big proponent of about everything can fit into a healthy diet. The importance is what your portion size is and how often you're choosing it. So these foods can fit into a healthy diet, but the idea is you're probably going to have to select them much less often um, and in quite small portions So, in order to stay within your calorie needs and maintain a healthy body weight. So speaking of what is a healthy body weight, how can you figure out if you are at a healthy body weight? The best, most useful, easy to use um, uh, assessment of body weight that we have right now is what's called the body mass index or the BMI. And this indicates body fatness using, if you're an adult, just your weight and height, and for children, their weight, height, and their age. So the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention website has a fabulous calculator. You can just go plug in your information, it will interpret it for you, and you can determine whether you're at a healthy body weight or not. 
These next two slides um, is information straight from the CDC website on interpreting body mass index. And since I want to make sure we have plenty of time for questions, I'm just going to breeze through these since they're available on the website. But it basically just tells you based on what the BMI turns out to be, what if you're underweight, healthy, or overweight, and then what um, would be indicated in that, in that case, either gaining weight, losing weight, or maintaining. So this is the one for adults, and this is the interpretation for, for children. But the last thing I want to mention is how to put this all together. So within the um, dietary guidelines and choose my plate, there is this um, useful tool called the super tracker. So you can go in and create free of charge your own profile. You can track your diet, you can track physical activity, you can create goals for weight loss. Um, basically, it's, it's just a, a great tool to have absolutely free. I encourage everybody to visit it, create your profile, and start using it. Um, so that's called the Super Tracker. And then I have all the resources that I've mentioned today. I just summarized on, on this last slide. And I think we're ready for questions.